is staggering. The rain from Tropical Storm Harvey now surpassing all records. I've never been through this, and I don't wish shit on anybody. Overnight, more than four inches of rain an hour coming down. Millions waking up to a scene of epic flooding. And everybody's lost so much, and it still keeps continuing to rain. I have never experienced anything like this. I I didn't even imagine that it was going to be this catastrophic. Oh, just incredible watching this video, Mark. As everybody was, we were kind of glued to the TV, watching back home and just seeing all of these homes underwater and all over. I mean, there were no boundaries. It didn't stay within the Houston area. Mike and I just said, gosh, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that were affected that aren't going to have a home. We were watching all the rescues that were going on, and I didn't sleep very well on Monday night and kind of kind of woke up thinking about, okay, at some point, all the life-saving stuff's gonna be over. What's the next phase? We just started brainstorming about ways that, you know, we could join together forces and, and make a difference in the community. So we wake up Tuesday morning, and we have an inkling of a plan that we're gonna try to get enough stuff pulled together to outfit 10 teams. If you're not doing anything this afternoon, um, we're, uh, we're gonna be unloading a whole bunch of, of um, cleaning uh, tools and supplies. Everything shows up here by about 2, 2 p.m. on Thursday. 100 people are, gre are here to greet us, Jesuit families, HCSS employees, get everything completely unloaded, organized into 10 teams of equipment. And that evening, three teams went out to, to houses and started mucking. We started using social media to kind of spread the word that we wanted to try to get these teams together. A lot of people were contacting me just on my personal Facebook page, the Straight Jesuit Harvey page. People were posting needs, people were posting that they wanted to go volunteer. And then I had a call from the soccer team that they were looking for a house. So they called me for an address and I said, yes, there's desperate need over in a new area of Katy that just opened up today. One of our coaches uh had kind of reached out and said there was an opportunity in his area of town and uh, started thinking and, and Coach and I kind of got together saying, hey, let's just put it out there to our soccer players and um, see if we can get a group of guys to go out and help. Going into the front of the neighborhood, the homes weren't really that bad. And then once you turned each street, it seems like the further you got into the neighborhood, you saw more and more devastation. And I just remember my heart kind of sinking into my stomach just seeing um, this piles and piles of all of their belongings, their furniture, their clothes, sheetrock. And so the Straight Jesuit bus of soccer players pulled up. So today we have a lot of uh, Straight Jesuit boys with us. Um, as you see, um, the bus pulled up with the soccer team today. So we have soccer team members here. We also um, have some football players that'll be coming in. Stuff like the corners and stuff that are too hard to get with. Being young, our kids are resilient. They have wonderful attitudes. So it was neat to see these kids coming in and they're here to help. And they come with such joy and positive attitudes. And some of them themselves were in situations where they were coming, their families were flooded, but they were coming to join in this brotherhood, this Straight Jesuit Brotherhood, to help their peers and to help people that they didn't even know. And they showed up with this joyful attitude and just jumped in ready to help. And one of the things we talked about every morning before they set out as well was, you are all one team. We worked together and I think it was a great takeaway as well of sort of the team and camaraderie, you know, taking a challenge which can seem very daunting and very overwhelming and doing it together as a, as a collective unit for a collective goal. Picture you're in a war or something and you've got your kind of veteran soldiers that have already been through a few battles and then you're also getting some fresh, some fresh replacements. So at that point, you know, at least a third of those kids had already cut sheetrock, already had done floors, already knew, knew what to look out for and already knew the process, how to optimize in a room. So when their buddies came in that didn't know anything about, about the process, I didn't have to, at that point I'm not teaching anybody. I'm just making sure that nobody's blocked, that we're getting into other houses, that kind of stuff. Because I already knew there was this critical mass of guys that already knew how to do this stuff and they were sharing the knowledge with everybody else. I walked into one of the smaller rooms in the back of Andrew's house early on that day. We'd only been in the house less than an hour probably at that point and he was just standing in a corner just staring at some of the sheetrock that had been cut back of his home and 
he just had tears in his eyes. So the first day we came back, it was without a doubt the toughest thing I've ever seen. You know, you come in and everything you've ever purchased or the home you love is just, it's gone and you can't even recognize it. It was really important to me to get any of the families that we were working with busy. He was in there working on the floors with them and and uh, and actually it seemed like they were really having fun together and just, just um, there's something about that youthful spirit, it's hard just not to get caught up in it, it's pretty contagious. And what was so fun is to watch even the homeowners' attitudes change from this almost sense of despair when we first got there and hopelessness to seeing these kids coming in and it became something that we were doing, a step-by-step -step process to a story of hope. It was, a, it was a feeling of relief knowing that we made so much progress and we were ready to start the next step, ready to rebuild and ready to get back in the house. By the end of the afternoon, sharing laughs and jokes and singing along with the boys. I heard you guys in there singing, singing. At the end of the day, when y'all are exhausted, banging away, look at this, this is, <laughs> banging away so hard on hardened steel crowbars that you're breaking the crowbar. I mean, it was amazing to see that happen. We have amazing, amazing boys at our school. He could see the path to getting back to normal, and that was the important thing. They won't remember this in 20, 25 years, but I definitely will. We were just talking about the day and what they had accomplished and the impact that they made. And then one of the boys led, it, led us in prayer. And I gotta tell you, I mean, it really, that, that moment was, was really like probably my climax of this whole experience, just being with those boys with this positive energy. And, and there we were finishing the day, thanking God for all of our blessings and praying for, for resilience and wisdom and community for these families. And that came from the boys. I didn't, I didn't do that prayer, that was them. And they're just, their hearts are just so big and, and so inspiring. Being part of the Straight Jesuit community is something that I just hold dear to my heart. And I'm so thankful that my kids get to, to experience it and, and always be a part of Straight Jesuit and be a man for others. There was no boundaries with this storm. There were uh, people from all walks of life that were jumping in in this project that we put together. And our project was actually just one of many of the projects that the Straight Jesuit community was involved in. We had family, friends, faculty, alumni, all joining forces to volunteer all over the city of Houston for two straight weeks. And then once school reopened, the Harvey Relief Fund was set up to help our families that are in need. And that's what it's all about. That's, we're all here together to help one another, and um, God's hand had a, a big part in everything that we did.